Avoiding the Pitfalls of Ministry today on Voice for Restoration podcast. Let's go. Hey, greetings, folks. Apostle Lewis here with you. This week's Voice for Restoration podcast, we're going to be talking about avoiding some of the trappings of ministry when it comes to comparing ourselves to other people, seeing success in other people, and how do we handle that as we are grinding away and uh, and things like that. How do you um, avoid some of the things I've watched many ministers get caught into, and that is envy. And envy uh, masquerades as wisdom a lot of times. It's bitterness. And it masquerades as, oh, well, I, let me just tell you something that I see that, you know, obviously you're not aware of. And I, I want to talk about that today. It's very important because I've watched um, people get critical of bigger ministries because they're not as big. And and um, there are ministries, by the way, I, I, this is not a pass that all ministries are doing the right thing. And that, that's not the goal. The goal is to, always the guarding of your heart, that your heart is, stays, remains pure and free from spirits of envy and strife. So uh, James chapter three is where we're going to begin today. And, you know, James is a uh, James is one of those books that when you read, you realize he's getting in your face a little bit. And he does. And. Uh, probably because, you know, um, he watched his brother. Uh, James is the brother of Jesus. This is not the brother of John. And he probably saw, you know, uh, you know, it's James and Jude both have really strong corrections. And um, probably because they watched some of the error getting into the church pretty quickly. And since they had watched their brother um and and all that they probably felt like hey this is really not good um jude warns um us of contending for the faith that uh was given to us in the beginning and that is um really really important wisdom so let's look at this and i'm going to read it out of the a new king james version it says who is wise and understanding among you, let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the spirit of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, demonic. For every, uh, for where Every, if, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there but the wisdom that is from above is first pure then peaceable gentle willing to yield full of mercy and good fruits without partiality without hypocrisy now the fruit of righteousness is sown uh, in peace by those who make peace now what what John, what James is not I think trying to tell us here is that you're supposed to compromise on truth that's not what he's saying he's giving us both sides of the coin that if we really hold wisdom and someone brings um, brings us a corrective word to us, or it says, hey, look, um, if it's true wisdom from God, that we should yield to it. We should do it peacefully. We should do it with love and, and all those things. But, uh, you know, it doesn't mean, he, what he's not saying here is to yield all the time. Like you're always, because you're more righteous or you're meek, that you're always supposed to yield to someone else's truth. That's not what he's saying. I want to caution against that one too, of overextending and just allowing people to uh, uh, break down what is truth in us. So that's not what he's talking about. But in the King James, it says where um, where there's bitter envy, um, and it doesn't say where there is. It says, but if ye have <laughs> bitter envy and strife in your hearts. Glory not and lie not against the truth. And so let's talk about this for something that happens to ministers. I've watched it. Um, um, you you raise up someone, you know, and I and I've raised up people, man, that are just dynamite, you know. And if and I remember when I first became a pastor and I started giving a platform because when I had my own ministry, it was my ministry, and I didn't have the advantage or the uh, the um, the uh, ability to literally give someone my platform. 
because I didn't have a church. I didn't have a platform. I was always speaking for, you know, at other people's venues. So it wasn't my platform to give away. But when the Lord had me um, start a church in Jacksonville and I started doing this, I felt these spirits of envy because I was giving them platform. They were amazing. I mean, I've had some very amazing people around me in my in my ministry time and, and so grateful for it. And that that I, I would hear this and I now I didn't give into it. I would just have to ask the Holy Spirit what this was and what was going on here? Why was that? And he, and he started talking and teaching me about the spirits of envy and strife. And um, if you ever heard me teach on the ancient pathway, the highway of holiness, um, that there is this pathway that I would keep having this vision on. And, and it was an ancient road. It was just like an old, you could tell the path was worn out. Like there was rock, uh, not like pavers, but almost like it was a rock pave, you know, like a, on a one big rock. And, but you could see it had been worn out through travel. You know, it was an ancient road and it had been traveled. And the Lord starts speaking to me. This is the road of Enoch. This is the road of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David and Moses and Jer Jeremiah and uh, Joshua and Ezekiel. And he started showing me all this and Paul and Jesus. This was like this ancient road. And I, and I, and I found this in scripture, by the way. So I'm, I'm not going to give you all the scriptures. But even Moses says, Lord, if I found favor in your sight, show me your way. That word is pathway. And in Jeremiah 6, it says, show us the old roads. Or in the, in the Holman Christian State Bible, it says, show us the ancient pathways. And these pathways are the path highways of holiness. They are the, the ways of walking with God that are uh, of the Spirit, tried and true, no compromise, nothing. And so uh, envy comes in because... You, number one, uh, a lack of trusting the Lord, and you think that person doesn't deserve it as much as you do. And what we all have to understand is that none of us deserve anything, okay? And that's one thing that I really try to remind myself. However, by faith, I can expand and increase my ministry and stuff like that. But I, it's not something I deserve, because if I deserve it, it's not wages. God owes it to me. God doesn't owe me anything. And what I've watched ministers do, and I've been in green rooms, that's why I hate green rooms, is that you can get in this kind of click where they're critical of other ministers who aren't there to defend themselves, who um, aren't, you know, there, there's a jealousy, an envy that comes up, and it leads to bitterness, and it leads to contempt, and, um, and then if, God forbid, that person just should not be perfect, they're going to tear that person down because it's not really... Um, godly. It's just really, they're bitter of the platform. They're bitter of the miracles or whatever. Um, you know, I've watched this from, you know, Bishop Hammond to Bill Johnson, to James Gall, to Kim Clement. I've seen the people, Rod Rodney Howard Brown, my own spiritual father, Randy. Um, I've seen people be very critical of them, thinking they're going to get favor to me, thinking that they're going to get some kind of, you know, like, oh, you know, Oh, you know, I, I remember Chris talking about when he got to Bethel and people would go up to Chris and go, be careful with Bill because God has shown me some things. And really what it is is jealousy and also the lack of control they have over that leader. And they they operate more in the spirit of manipulation and control. And we'll do control maybe another time talking about how it's not a word in the kingdom that we're supposed to use and um, how God has authority but not control. He doesn't control everything. And, um, you know, we just really, really have to understand that he gives free will and free will is opposite of control. Um, so it's really important that when you see something and even if it's some a ministry that you believe God's called you to, instead of getting envious, humble yourself, go up to that person, ask them if they will pray for you um, and, and impart to you. You know, it's very easy. I'll get prayer from anybody for impartation. Like, you know, that, that doesn't bother me at all. But I think sometimes um, we don't realize it's envy. We 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 feel that God's showing us something. Of course, we don't know what it is. I, I just have a check. I just have a check. Now, I've, I've walked up to ministers and gotten a check. And you know what God did? He still used them. And and then later on, they, they you know, 20 years later, they had a real problem, you know. And I saw that check in, but I didn't have any relationship. I, someone would introduce me to someone and you know, Randy would introduce me to people that he knew were um, doing some pretty 
um, dangerous stuff, things lacking integrity. And Randy just seemed to kind of like always ask me, um, <laughs> you know, uh, hey, what'd you think of him? What do you think? And I would just flat out, he knows one thing Randy knew is I would just tell him what I felt. And, and I'd be really honest about it because one of my commitments to Randy was I would never, ever, if I was hurt by him, anything, if, if I felt anything, I would never keep it a secret. I'd always bring it to him. So my heart would not get bitter. So we'd always talk everything out, um, and, and things like that. And so, um, we did that. That was just our relationship. That's why it worked. And, but he, I knew I was honest. And that's one of the things that I try to be, I want to be honest in everything. And I, and I don't try to be honest. I am honest uh, in everything for a reason. I, I, I don't like being lied to. It's like one of the things that I will not be in relationship with anyone who lies because I, there's no, there's no grounding for that relationship because I have to check everything you say. And I just won't do that. Um, I've been lied to and it hurts. It hurts when you're manipulated and lied to and deceived and so I just, I, I, this is, goes back to, you know, uh, a long time now where it's just tell the truth. And, um, and so I've seen ministers get really upset that that minister all of a sudden has got a platform they don't have, or they believe, you know, God's supposed to give them a platform like that. And the way you, the way they build themselves up is by finding fault in that person. And that's really not good. Okay. It's really not good. And you know, Bill Johnson's got that amazing statement. Um, you know, don't stumble over someone when, you know, when you see what they're not in Christ, you know, or how does he put it? Um, you honor someone who they are in Christ while not stumbling over who their, you know, their shortcomings are. He's got a different way of saying it. But now that doesn't mean Bill doesn't confront. That means that, the, trust me, behind the scenes and face to face, Bill does that. Okay. Bill is an honest Joe. And I know this cause I've been, um, I've been in the behind the scenes mode at times and he, he does confront, he just won't do it from the pulpit. That's just not his thing. And that might be other people's thing, but it's not his thing. Don't get mad. Cause it's not his thing. I had a prophet who was, um, uh, came to our church. I was driving him to the airport and he was upset with Bill cause he didn't expose someone publicly. And, and, and I said to him in the car, I said, so what you think Bill should have done, was get up on his platform, expose this individual, because it would have made you feel better about Bill. And the guy looked at me like, are you telling me Bill confronted him? I said, of course Bill confronted him. But do you think he was supposed to do that for you? Would it, would it have made you feel better if Bill ripped him a new one from the from the pulpit? And, and the guy says, oh, I see what you're saying. He says, I said, you know, we don't confront for you. We confront... Now, this guy had his own ministry, so he wasn't a pastor. You know, he, he didn't have that, pa that fathering role. He was a prophet. And he's a really good prophet, by the way. And, and you know what's funny is that that guy since has moved out to Bethel. That's what's funny about it. Because at one time he was very critical of Bill, but I think I kind of slapped him enough. I said, look, Bill does that. He just doesn't do it for our benefit. He does it for the persons. When Matthew 18 is all for the person, not for us. And James warns that this... This, if it's self-seeking and bitter envy is in us, strife, it creates confusion. Now, on that ancient road, I've been down several times. I go up to a gate. I went up to the gate. Like, I would go farther down the road in the vision. And I finally got to this gate, and Jesus was on the other side. And Jesus gave me a key, and I unlocked it. And um, I talk about that uh, in another time, okay? But just for one of the keys that he gave me was faith. Like you have to use your faith. It's the only thing. It is impossible to please God. And it's impossible for your destiny to come about if you don't have faith. All right. So I, this one time I had this dream. And um, this time I was above the road. That wasn't because I was high and lofty. It was God was showing me the road, this ancient pathway and the gate. But he was showing me from an observatory perspective, not as a participant. I was observing. And he just wanted me to watch. And I saw these men and women walking up the road. And there was these two spirits before the gate. And they would touch them. And then all of a sudden, it was like the people forgot where they were going on the road. And they would walk in circles. They'd walk the wrong way. 
and they wouldn't get to the gate. And I said, Lord, what is that? And he said to me, those spirits are envy and strife. And they, if you let them, they will keep you from your destiny in me. They will keep you because you'll get full of envy. And he was teaching me, warning me that, hey, there's always going to be an opportunity to be an envy and strife. Always an opportunity to be an envy and strife. And you do not want to participate in it. Because if you participate in it, you will short circuit your destiny. And, and that is true. And, um, you know, that is the problem for a lot of people is they short circuit that destiny and, and you don't want to do that. And I've watched, I've had leaders who got envy, watched them just implode. Um, it's, it's not worth it. And, and it happens because the enemy does that. It's a, it's a thing of the enemy. Guard yourself from it. Keep your heart pure. Honor those around you. Honor, who should I honor? Honor those around you. It doesn't mean because I honor someone. I agree with them theology, right? theologically. It doesn't mean I agree with them. It just means I'm honoring them for who they are, okay? And who God has called them to be. And they're made in the image of God. And I want to honor that. It doesn't mean I agree with them. It doesn't mean if a guy commits murder that I honor him to the point I don't, we don't prosecute the murderer. That's, that's not what I'm saying. It's just, just, it's just guarding your heart. Remember, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And it's your job to guard that heart. And envy and strife is something you have to keep it from. So let's say you do see someone who's walking in something you feel like you're supposed to walk in. Instead of getting envious, instead of sitting there going, well, I, I don't know why I don't have it. God, how come I don't have that? Humble yourselves and go, Lord, make a way that I can have this person lay hands on me because I see the very thing you've called me to and I want to walk in it. And then go to them and humbly ask and be hungry. And you might have to ask more than once, twice. You might have to go serve. There are sometimes things that God will make you do. But just go and humble yourself. And if you do that, you'll keep yourself from the 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 spirit of envy and strife. Because look, there's a lot of big ministries that go like this. They go up, 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 and then they flatline because they got into envy. And when you do that, it's very, very dangerous. So I hope this helps you. I hope this is something that will um, help you as far as moving forward in your life. It's kind of key uh, the way I look at it. So I hope this is a blessing to you. And we will see you and hear from you. You'll hear from me next week on Voice Restoration Podcast. You have a fantastic day. Bye-bye.